What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp animation tutorial for you today. So in today's video we're going to use the extension animator in order to animate a sliding door with moving hardware inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this video is a continuation of my series on 10 kinds of animations you can create inside of SketchUp. And so if you wanna download the example file for this video, as well as the other videos in the series, I will link to that in the notes down below, or you can go to the sketchupessentials.com slash animation. And so one thing I will note is we are using the free extension animator for SketchUp. Um, in order to do this, you can download that from the Sketchication plugin store. But what we're going to do is we're going to start off by downloading a door. So we're just going to go to the 3D warehouse and just use one of the doors that's already in there. Um, in particular, I am liking I am liking the barn door sliding 36 inch um, with more dimensions in here by Lee S. So we're going to download this and follow along. So we're going to click on download, click on yes, and just bring this into our model. So the first thing we want to do before we even get into animator is we just want to look at the way this door is organized because basically what we're going to do is we're going to animate the movement of the door and then we're going to link the movement of our hardware to that door. And then we'll also add rotation in here of this actual hardware itself. So what we're going to need is we're going to need that door to be its own piece of geometry. And so we can look at the organization inside of the outliner. But what we've got right now is we've got the barn door, we've got the door, which we can animate the movement, and then we've got the hardware. Well, in this case, for the hardware, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the rail and this hardware is in a separate group. And you'll see why in a minute, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to select the hangers and the handles and put them in their own group. So that way we can animate those separately because what we don't want to do is animate the movement of the rail itself. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to save this and then we're going to open up animator. So, and remember, I will make this available for download um, on that animations page that I talked about a minute ago. But now what we want to do, this is saved. So I just want to open up animator. And so when we open up animator, you can see how that gives us our toolbar in here. Where we can start adding movement. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to add movement to our door. So the way that we do that is we just want to go into the movement section. We want to click on this button right here for insert a unit movement. And we just want to add a new movement. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to do a translation movement, meaning we want this to move along the red axis right here. And so all we need to do is we need to select the option for translation and then click on our door. And remember this shows us the organization of our door. And so we just want to make sure that we select the, uh, we want to select the group that contains the door itself um, and everything that's inside of it. So we're just going to click on this two for door. And then all we want to do is we just want to set the offset in this direction, right? And our full range of motion is going to go to about here. That's about where the stop would be. It'd probably go a little bit further actually because um, the hardware is what hits the stop, but this is going to be close enough for right now. So they're just, we're just going to click on the checkbox right here for save the sequence and exit. And so what that's going to allow us to do now is if we were to move our mouse along this timeline, notice that our door is moving. So we've got a base door movement set inside of SketchUp. Well now, we have a problem because our hardware isn't moving with our door. And so what you could do is you could come in here and insert another unit movement for that hardware, but I don't necessarily want to do that. What I want to do instead is I want to add a constraint. And so what a constraint is going to do is it's basically going to link the movement of our door to our hardware. So the way that we can do that is we're just going to click on this button right here for insert a kinematic constraint. And if we click on this, we can click on new kinematic constraint. And so now what we need to do is we need to set the master object and the slave object. And basically what that means is the master object is going to be the object with the movement that you want to copy to the other object. So in this case, it's just going to be our door, right? So we'll just click on here and then click on door. And then we just want to come in here and we just want to select our hardware. And notice this is why it was important that we set up our grouping properly because before this hardware was just in a hardware group and we would have linked our movement to our rail, which we don't want because the rail doesn't move. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna click in here and we're gonna find the group 
inside of our hardware group that we created before. So it's going to be this one right here. Then we're going to click the uh, checkbox right here. Well, now notice how you get this little icon over here um, for a kinematic constraint that is now linked so that the movement of our hardware will be the same as our door. So now if I click on play, notice how our hardware is moving along with the door. So now any movement that we add to the door is going to get linked over to the hardware. And so then what we can do is we just want to come in here and we just want to set these wheels to rotate inside of our scene. And remember, unless you're creating a, unless you're creating like a actual mechanical animation here, you might not want to go to this level of detail, but I'll go ahead and show you how we would get these to rotate along the top here. So basically what we need to do is we need to make sure these wheels are their own groups because currently they're not. So we're just going to click on this button right here to exit the tool. I'm going to go ahead and save everything that we've done, but that's going to take me back into SketchUp so I can make this change. And so notice how when I click in here like this, these objects are components, meaning if I make a change, to one. Notice how the other one is blue in here as well. well what we want to do is we just want to come in here and we just want to select this. We just want to right click and make it a group. And we're just going to call it wheel. So we're just going to rename this wheel right here. So now that's in here as a separate piece of geometry that we can control with animator. So now we're going to jump back into animator. And what we want to do is we want to insert a movement where this turns when our door moves. And so the way that we can do that is we can just click in here and click on a new movement. And we just want to add a spin translation or a spin movement. So if we click on spin, you can see how we can spin around in here, click on our piece of hardware, and we want to set our wheel as our animation movement. And so in this case, notice how it's already giving us a central point, but what we can do is we can also tap the left arrow key. And we just want to align this with the center point of our object. So now I've got this set, well I can click and I can set a rotation, right? So in this case, for example, we can set this rotation to be, we're gonna do, negative 360 degrees. So I'm gonna hit the enter key. And so that means that's gonna turn 360 degrees right now over the course of two seconds. And we can mess with the speed of that in a second, but notice how that turns now as our door moves. One thing we might do just in this case, so you can see it turning is we might just add a material or something like that just to make it look a little bit different. That's part of why um, a lot of the time you don't necessarily need to do this because you can't see it turning. So there's really no reason to animate it. But let's go ahead and just for the sake of this video, let's just jump back into SketchUp. We'll click yes to save. And let's just apply a material in here real quick to this object, just so you can see it turning. So I'm just going to, so real quick, I'm gonna go into my model info, components, and I'm just gonna check the box for hide so that when I'm in here, it's gonna hide the rest of my model. And again, like this isn't necessarily the way a piece of hardware would look, but for this video, I just want to illustrate the object moving. So I'm just gonna split out a piece like this, and then we'll just use the rotate tool in copy mode. In order to split this up. And then let's apply a different material. So let's just go into our metal and maybe just apply a silver material like this. So then I'm gonna turn this off. And now we're good to go. So again, not necessarily the most realistic, but it'll show us what our animation is doing. So now let's just jump back into Animator and let's play our animation. All right, so one weird thing you might notice about this is for whatever reason, you can see that movement when you double click in here and you edit the rotation, right? So if you show this like this, you can see it in here. But then if you go out here in your timeline, you can't see that rotation 
in the scene. I don't know why that is, but I can tell you that um, as long as you have that in there, it will show up when you export your file. So you can pay attention and make sure when you're actually doing the video export, but for whatever reason, it's not showing up um, right here. But if you click on this button right here and go to player mode, it will show up then. So you can play this in order to see it. So I don't know what that's about or why it's doing that, but just know that your uh, spin animation is in here. But now what I wanna do is I just wanna make this a little bit longer and I just wanna set this rotation so that it repeats. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this whole thing um, and click on it and I'm gonna change the duration to something like six seconds. And so that's fine, except now your rotation animation is gonna stop at one second. Right, your duration is currently set at one. So what you can do is you can adjust the duration of this rotation. So we could set this to like three seconds. But then the other thing I want is I also want this to repeat. So for example, let's say, because right now it's gonna stop at three seconds, right? If we jump into player mode and look at this, you're gonna get wheels moving, then the wheels are gonna stop moving and just slide at the end. So what we wanna do is we just wanna come in here and we just wanna click on the scene and then click on the button for repeat. All right, I'm just gonna click on repeat forever. So that's just gonna repeat this animation for the length of the clip. So now we jump back into player mode. You can see how we're gonna have an animation where our doors turn or our wheel turns as our door moves. And so that animation is probably a little bit long. So we're just gonna bring this down to maybe a duration of two seconds, or we might even end up at one. So we're just kind of eyeballing it right now. I'm not gonna do the math on what this should be for number of resolutions, but I just wanna look at this to make sure this actually looks like the amount of rotation makes sense in here. And so we've got all that done. What we wanna do now is we could add a camera that kind of follows along with this. So what we could do is go back to zero seconds, insert a camera, like this, and what I wanna do is I wanna zoom in to about here. I wanna click on Capture Current View Camera. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna save my camera right here and apply it to my scene. So now I've got this kind of like closer in view. And then if we wanted to, we could take that camera And we could set it to track our door. So we could just double click on the little icon for camera here, and then use this option right here in order to track our door movement. So we just click in here. We could just use our door like this. And so we wanna set it to track and select our door, and then we wanna capture our camera position. Now, if we go back over here, notice our camera is gonna move along with our door right here. Now, I don't necessarily like the tracking camera view in this situation because it makes your door look like it's not moving. So we're actually gonna go back and we're just gonna set this to be a static view with our current camera. But if you did want this to track, it could definitely do that. So now we've got our door moving. Now let's just export our, our video. So in order to do that, we're gonna go over here and click on the button for generate a video for the film. You should probably save first. <clears throat> That's gonna take you to your video generation page. It's gonna allow you to generate this video. Um, one thing to note about this, and I will link to a video about this in the notes down below, you do need to make sure that you've installed this FFmpeg um, codec to allow this to actually stitch your uh, images into a video. So I will link to a video about how to do that in the notes down below. But in this case, I'm just gonna set this to be barn door animation. We'll leave these other things in here. Note that things will be smoother with a higher frame rate. It's gonna have to generate more frames um, in order to do that, so it'll take longer. You can see the number of frames down here at the bottom of the page. Um, but I'm gonna leave the rest of this as is for right now. Um, and then I'm just gonna click on the button for generate video. And so what that's gonna do is that's just gonna generate frames 
for my animation. So you can see how it's generating a frame or an image for each one of these, and then it's gonna stitch them together into a video file. And you can see how it gives you kind of a preview of how long that's gonna take. Um, I'll come back and show you the animation that it creates when we're all done. All right, so then you're gonna get this little screen right here where you can either open the folder where your file's located or you can just click on the play button in order to play that video file. But you can see how what that's allowed us to do is that's allowed us to create this moving animation of our door moving across inside of SketchUp. Now there's more we could do with this. Leave a comment down below if there's something else you'd like to see how to do, but you can use this to create a lot of cool mechanical animations inside of your models. So remember you can download the example files from this video um, by going to the link in the notes down below or to, by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash animation. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.